We've been asked by a number of people if we can put together a list of books that we recommend. So we thought we'd make a little video where we discuss our books that have been important, or the books that have been important to our transition over the last 12 years. We're also using this time to update our resources list, which will include these books and many more books, um, but also podcasts and website links uh, and things like that. And the address for that resource list is tinyurl.com slash neopeasant. We'll put that along the bottom of the screen. Uh, to get things started, I am going to start with the end. The Human Manure Handbook, A Guide to Composting Human Manure by Joseph Jenkins. If you're interested in learning to compost your own manure, but are scared you'll get sick and the neighbours will complain about the smell, this is the book that will help you in your transition from being a fecophobe to a fecophile. It's the shit. <laughs> I'm also going to start with a very practical book, uh, the Seed Savers Handbook, uh, Michelle and Jude Fanton. We've been saving seeds for a long time, uh, but this is... I guess since the pandemic, um, we've just upped uh, that uh, seed saving up another notch. And um, this is an easy and practical guide to saving seeds with other useful hints and info about edible and herbal plants. Very useful resource. Same with this one. Uh, the Weed Forager's Handbook, A Guide to Edible and Medicinal Weeds in Australia by Adam Grubb and Annie Razor Rowland. Want to know what weeds are edible and medicinal and how to forage safely? This excellent book is a great place to start and helped me enormously become a confident harvester and cook of autonomously growing plants. And from edible weeds to weeds as ideology. Um, this is an important book for moving us away from reductionist ideas of ecology especially the ideology of correct and incorrect species, good and evil biota, and therefore away from pesticides. Um, Tao Orion's book, Beyond the War on Invasive Species, a permaculture approach to ecosystem restoration is uh, a must read if you're uh, interested in biodiverse ecologies and what the relationship between old timer and newcomer species. And still on weeds, The Wild Wisdom of Weeds, 13 Essential Plants for Human Survival, a forager's guide to ultimate food security, including 100 nutrient-dense nutrient recipes for food, medicine, and self-care by Katrina Blair. I love this book. It helped me build my friendships with weeds on a spiritual, scientific, poetic, sensory and embodied way. It's quirky and full of lots of recipes from dips to desserts to toothpaste. Hmm. And from feral or weed biota to the broader questions um, of ecology, this book by Eduardo Conn, How Forests Think Towards an Anthropology Beyond the Human. Um, is a wonderful read. Uh, Con's time living with the Runa peoples in Ecuador's upper Amazon leads him to question the uniqueness of the human experience. He discovers that signs are not distinctly human and jaguars represent us as much as we represent them. Quite a technical read, but well worth the effort. Next up, Soil Not Oil, Environmental Justice in an Age of Climate Crisis by Vandana Shiva. When giving up our cars and beginning to compost and learn about soil communities as the basis for life and for ecological cultures, this was a perfect companion text. Speaking of companion texts, um, I've been very interested, as Meg has and others, in our peasant uh, past, our peasant ancestry, um, from both a political uh, and a spiritual uh, and also low carbon perspectives. The invention of capitalism, classical political economy and the secret history of primitive accumulation by uh, Michael Perelman is an incredibly exceptional uh, read uh, in this area. This book dispels many myths about English peasants pre-Adam Smith and shows how Smith and co manipulated Parliament to trammel 
the peasantry and force them from land bondedness into industrial servitude. Perlman is a meticulous scholar and uh, it again a technical read but very uh, worth worthwhile if you're interested in economic history and how that relates to this present moment. From Capitalism to Frugalism, The Art of Frugal Hedonism, A Guide to Spending Less While Enjoying Everything More by Annie Razor Rowland with Adam Grubb. A rich and humorous book to help you move away from consumer culture with a spring in your step and a song in your heart. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. I'm the publicist for this book. I'm also, we are also in this book. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, frugal hedonism um, could potentially lead to this next book. Uh, it certainly has for us, life without money or, or life without, with, with much less money. Uh, Building Fair and Sustainable Economies, um, edited by Anitra Nelson and Franz Timmerman. Anitra is a good mate of ours, um, and we've got a book, a book chapter in her next edited book called Food for Degrowth coming out further in the year. An important text for those who can conceive of post-money societies and the environmental benefits that would necessarily follow. If you're interested in degrowth, this book is definitely for you. Another book on the economy, Local is Our Future, Steps to an Economics of Happiness by Helena Norberg-Hodge. What does a post-growth world look like? This book outlines the argument for a relocalized lifeway and why the future really is local and not global. And uh, degrowth uh, does uh, require uh, uh, well, degrowth, of course, is, is planned um, economic degrowth rather than chaotic, uh, which does um, require a, a societal move to a leanness. And this book, Lean Logic, um, published posthumously um, by uh, David Fleming. It's a dictionary, uh, of, for, a dictionary for the future and how to survive it is the subheading. Um, and yes, Fleming worked on this exceptional dictionary for years, a kind of precursor to retrosuburbia, though more theoretical. It is a great aid for anyone voyaging away from business as usual and wishing to rebuild ecological cultures of place. Up next, Retrosuburbia, The Downshifter's Guide to a Resilient Future by David Holmgren. This essential book is a manifesto as well as a practical handbook full of ideas how to build household resilience into all aspects of life and we feature throughout the behaviour change section. And you're also the publicist. Disclaimer, I'm also the publicist for this book. <laughs> okay, uh, which leads to another great book um, and uh, a companion, uh, I guess, to Holmgren's work from 10 to 20 years ago and his uh, David's um, future scenarios planning is by John Michael Greer, The Long Descent, uh, a user's guide to the end of the industrial age. This is an original critique of dominant culture ideologies, especially the binary myths of progress and apocalypse. Like Holmgren, Greer offers an important alternative, The Long Descent, and it's a precursor to the degrowth uh, movement. On to degrowth travel. The Art of Free Travel, a Frugal Family Adventure by Patrick Jones and Meg Ullman. Uh, we wrote this book that documents our family's bicycle adventure from Central Victoria to Cape York, free camping, foraging, hunting and fishing, a book about permaculture travel. And another form of uh, travel book uh, by a friend, a dear friend of ours, Maya Ward, The Comfort of Water, uh, A River Pilgrimage, A Modern Day Feminine Rites of Passage, A Remarkable Pilgrimage by a Sensitive Feeling Thinker. Highly recommended. My Year Without Matches, Escaping the City in Search of the Wild by Claire Dunn. Another beautiful female rites of passage story and a personal journey from the noise of the city to deep ecology. Thanks, Claire. And from female rites of passage or initiation to uh, male uh, 
Initiation in Martin Prechtel's Long Life, Honey in the Heart, a story of initiation and eloquence from the shores of a Mayan lake. This is an important book in understanding what the ecological masculinities could be if we took rites of passage seriously again in our culture. And very much on that theme of non-toxic masculinity uh, is Michael Mead's Men and the Water of Life, Initiation and the Tempering of Men. An important book in understanding male initiation and its critical role in rebuilding ecological cultures of place. And as a lover of men and a mother of boys, I found this incredibly useful. Probably the most important feminist text I've read uh, in the last several years is Healing Pandora, The Restoration of Hope and Abundance by Gail Thomas. Um, Thomas examines in this book Pandora's fall from goddess figure to bringer of illness to men as the precursor of the Eve story. Uh, and in doing so, she offers a path back to gen what I call gender distributed culture and the composting of uh, patriarchal illness in society. Really highly recommend this book. And the most important feminist text that I've read in the last few years, Radical Homemakers, Reclaiming Domesticity from Consumer Culture by Shannon Hayes. I wish this text was available when I was coming of age. Back then, feminism meant joining the patriarchal global economy in power suits. Today, with the help of this book, it means having dirt under my nails while wearing an apron or wearing whatever the hell I want. And that segues nicely into this little book, a feminist text written by a male, being me. Um, this book asks how can fermentation as a cultural mode reinstate the feminine in order to rebuild ecological cultures of place. It's called Refermenting Culture, a return to insight through gut logic. And we have this available as a free um, ebook and also an audio book as well, if you're interested. This is also a book about the ecological um, masculinities as well, of course, and, and, and a book about our, a little book about our, our family's transition from what I call hyper-techno civility. It also has a recipe for uh, an acorn beer. Yeah, in the back. And talk about recipes. Wild Fermentation, the flavour, nutrition and craft of live culture foods by Sandor Katz. If you are a beginner or more experienced fermenter, this is a must-have recipe book. It's an adventure into creativity, experimentation, acceptance, and placing, and it might even help you form a better relationship with the idea of death and decay. Mm. Certainly a book to help prepare us for death. A Branch from the Lightning Tree, The Static Myth, and The Grace in Wildness by Martin Shaw. Um, although a writer of books, Shaw's mission is for our reacquaintance with the living of the world through story, myth, ancestors, and other than human realms. Shaw demonstrates that animism is not dead in Anglo peoples and far from it. Um, it is also a book about initiation and rites of passage. The Complete Book of Herbs and Spices by Claire Lowenfeld and Philippa Back. When you see old books like this from the 60s and 70s in op shops, grab them. They're going to be essential in a post-internet world. So much knowledge that we all need to know. Uh, John Burge's Pig Earth. This is, uh, I think, our first novel of, the, of our little book show here. Mm. Um, Berger spent um, many, much of his uh, adult years living with peasant uh, folk in France, and I guess as a neo-peasant novelist, um, but not just studying them and in a kind of bourgeois sense and writing books to send out to the middle-class world, but he actually harvested with them, rolled his sleeves up, got uh, dirt under his fingernails and r raised a family. Uh, with his partner in the village. Um, this is a sharp and giving novel based on uh, a French, a specific French uh, peasant community. Berger is a gem and this book is one of a trilogy. Um, much of what he has to write, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, is, is absolutely fantastic. 
and a, a real insight from, uh, I guess, the matrix out and how we are to reconnect with um, peasant ancestries and our old stories in the living uh, moment of people who still work and tend the earth. Nature's Children by Juliette de Barclay Levy. A very beautiful herbal medicine book packed full of common sense and recipes for pregnancy, birth, lactation, infants, and the whole family. <laughs> um, another book on uh, peasantry, uh, this time in Australia, by an English author called Alan Garner. Garner is very interested in uh, Green Man cosmology and uh, Earth Father and Earth Mother um, cosmology of, uh, of the Anglosphere, Celtic sphere. Um, Garner is from Cheshire, where William Buckley, the main character in this book, Stranloper. Garner unpacks uh, William Buckley as Green Man peasant, ripe for full initiation into Wuthering society, an insightful novel revealing the relationships between First Peoples of Cheshire and First Peoples of South Southwestern Victoria, with the capital axis of colonialism cutting between them. Highly recommended. Next up, Healing Wise by Susan S. Weed. My go-to herbal medicine reference book is giving me great confidence in learning how to treat my family from our garden and forest pharmacy. Which is a great segue to this incredible book by David Abram, Becoming Animal, an Earthly Cosmology. This was an incredible book in terms of me thinking through my creatureliness and my uh, creature of placeness. If you're interested in recovering your animist soul and your creaturely body, then this book is definitely for you. It's elegant, sharp, humble and radical. And Abram is part of a broad church aiding our return to what we have lost due to over domestication. Beautiful. Uh, another Susan Weed book, New Menopausal Years, the wise, woman, the wise Woman Way, Alternative Approaches for Women 30 to 90. A rich companion text for women like me, approaching perimenopause and menopause who would rather turn to herbal allies to help them transition instead of pharmaceuticals. And I guess in terms of understanding land and turning away from things like 1080 and um, other pesticides, Wild Dog Dreaming, Love and Extinction by one of my favorite Australian authors, Deborah Bird Rose, um, is a magnificent book. It's poetic, attuned, gracious and important. Rose listens deeply to her Aboriginal teachers and the riches of which are contained in this book. Our kin relationships with more than humans is the central theme. And Rose read, uh, passed and praised, I should say, uh, um, humbly, uh, my uh, doctorate, which um, I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, next up, Summer Hill by A.S. Neal. A must read book for anyone who is interested in alternative education models. Hmm. Snappy. My next book also relates to um, indigenous land management and indigenous philosophy and ecology and economy and culture. Bruce Pascoe's remarkable dark emu black seeds, agriculture or accident. Um, every time some TED Talk scholar says, we were once starved hunter and gatherers, this book should be thrown at them with great force. Pasco dispels the myth of agriculture beginning 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent and shows a more probable history. Uh, particularly for those of you in Australia, but this has broad appeal overseas as well and really speaks to um, the more accurate assertion that we have been for at least 100,000 years hunter-gatherer gardeners or some sort of cultivators. And this, uh, that cultivation uh, has, has led to um, deep cultures of place. Free to learn why unleashing the instinct to play will make our children happier, more self-reliant and better students for life by evolutionary biologist Peter Gray. 
If you're considering home educating or wondering why your curious, engaged child is not stimulated at school, this is a great book. And it's really given me confidence um, as a teacher and enabler of a homeschooled, home educated, world educated, self educating, um, almost eight year old who is actually outside making a ladder at the moment. <laughs> Maybe he can come in and show it at the end. Yeah, for me too, it gave me great confidence to get out of the way of um, our children's learning. Yeah. Um, adults often interfere. Um, uh, when they're ready to learn, children are learning. Um, and if we get out of the way, they just they learn exponentially. Um, okay, speaking of learning and student uh, work in a very different order, deep in the institution, I... Um, uh, was offered a uh, well I was invited to put in a proposal for um, a scholarship to do a doctorate several years ago and the outcome of that was walk, walk, walking for food regaining permapoeses um, and this uh, I, I was writing this uh, as our household and community um, uh, economies and culture was changing and not just in this household but in numerous households around the the town, just what we could do to attend to the problems of growth economics and liberal, um, neoliberal uh, economic frameworks. And, but also this is a, a literary text, so it, it, it sits within the ecological humanities. Um, it's a thesis dedicated to doing saying, that is walking the talk away from what I call hyper techno civility to ecological economy, culture and consciousness. It is quite dense. There's a whole bunch of poems in the middle of it. So it's a, a giant introduction, uh, a series of poems, and, and then a series of essays. This uh, is a resource you'll be able to find in our resource page. The Complete Bushfire Safety Book by Joan Webster. If you live in a fire-prone part of the world, like we do, this book is full of insights and essential tips to help you understand and adapt to the phenomenon of fire through preparedness and not fear. Hmm. And speaking of not fear, if you're a second people's person living on uh, first people's country, uh, this is uh, an exceptional book um, called uh, by Tyson Yunker Porter called Sand Talk. I've mentioned it many times um, on, on our, in our videos in the last several weeks. Um, the subtitle is How Indigenous Thinking Can Save the World. This book is uh, an exceptional, uh, probably the most important book written in Australia in the past five years. Um, uh, it's a big ideas book. It's funny, it's accessible and important and a great unpacking of what uh, Tyson calls adolescent a global adolescent society. It is also a book that really examines our education system and it also examines the absence of initiation and rites of passage. Um, oh, yeah, a wonderful book. And probably one of the most profound books that I've read over the last few years is Braiding Sweetgrass Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. This book is a remarriage of science, spirit and land consciousness. It's sensitive, powerful and full of grace and so beautifully written. Mm. I just loved it. I loved just holding it. <laughs> She's a great writer. She is. Well, that's it. That's it. We'll again months. publish the tiny URL. Uh, um, Tinyurl.com <laughs> slash neopheasant. And yeah, uh, check out our resource list. We'll keep adding to that uh, and feel free to share it. Okay, that's it from us. And also, if you oh. have books and films and podcasts and resources, anything that you th might think that uh, we would appreciate, please send them along. Thanks for watching. Oh, come and show everyone, buddy. Whoa! And what's, Beautiful. What sort of wood did you make? Well, with these two side poles are willow. Willow. And that's a piece of apple, and apple, that's a piece of pine, pine, and that's a piece of blackwood. Apple, that pine, one. blackwood, willow. They're all pretty important trees around here, aren't they? And what are you going to do with it? Um, I'm 
gonna make another one for the other side and then Dad might help me hinge here so there's another one and make a step ladder out of it. For, what are we gonna use that for? Uh, well, me and Dad do a winter pruning job and and for getting up trees to um, prune them. Yep. Like if they're a bit high for me then I can do that. Yeah. Great. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>